All right, fellow Empyreans, uh, there was an update on the Singularity today and also a little over th uh, uh, about three days ago. It is currently uh, Monday, April 4th, YC124. Um, we've seen a couple of updates. The update today was relatively minor, but the update from, 20, uh, from three days ago uh, was kind of a bigger deal for a few reasons. Um, we're going to look at most of them inside of the game, but um, a few of them that I need to look at pretty much outside of the game. We've got... So it is obvious that there is more to the hunt than there was before in several different ways. It looks like there is an escalation kind of system or or some sort of more advanced site than even just like the normal advanced site, like not just Huntmaster. Uh, they've tweaked the comms relay stuff a little bit, and it seems that they're adding in a component of, you know, like uh, working against the Caldari instead of work just working against the Garistas, like they have in other uh, events recently. So um, I did just put out my video today on the hunt, and I'll try to get this video out as soon as possible, so that way people can see it before the uh, event starts. But as you can see here, they've added in missile batteries. Uh, these missile batteries are probably on the inside room or used somewhere else, but they have it for any given damage type. So that's going to be important to note. Uh, whatever our solutions are, the uh, big hitters are going to be able to be any of these kinds of damage types unless there's some rule as to when they show up. And there's a newt tower involved. So that's kind of spooky. Um, that said, if we hop into Singularity... There is a lot more to look at. First of all, there is this new site that got a different description change today, uh, just today, I think it was, or whenever. The reptile pit was put in a couple weeks ago in uh, as part of the hunt stuff, but now the description has been changed to. The Reptile Pit Shipyard is one of the primary facilities used by the Grissus pilot pirates to refit many of their ship designs. Whether it be nimble worm frigates, flexible Gila cruisers, or formidable rattlesnake battleships, the Reptile Pit sees all Grissus ship types are maintained and upgraded. Conscious of the need for security and the threat from Concord task forces, Caldari State reprisals, or mercenary raiders, Karako Koasami, a.k.a. the Rabbit, turns his considerable technical skills to laying out a scheme for a shipyard that could be rapidly be packed up and moved to a new location periodically. As such, the Reptile Pit shipyard seems to wander around the Venal region, never lingering too long in one spot. The central control tower provides the main overwatch function for the shipyard, alerting the Gristus to any intruders and, assisting whether or not, uh, and assessing whether or not they are threats to their ship fitting operations. Whatever, or whenever threats indicate indications are too high, the reptile pit crews began to the process of packing up and shipping out to a new hiding place. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I don't, I don't know if this is going to be a, a site that you'll want to hunt down. I don't know if this is going to be a turn-in point. Uh, but, yeah, a site that wanders around Venal. Sounds like a site to run. <laughs> we'll see. Um, next, kind of skipping around a little bit, but we do have new whoa, uh, Capsuleer Day skins. However, uh, I don't quite know what to think about them right now. So far, I've never seen CCP make this mistake before. But like, so anytime, anytime that we've ever seen a, a purple diamond, you know, as much as things change on Sissy or whatever, by the time it gets on Sissy, if a skin has had a purple diamond, it does come out as a premium item, right? Which means it is either purchased on the Plex store, uh, you know, like the Ness, or as part of some package or something. Uh, what spooks me about this is that all of the Capsuleer Day skins have it and it also has the elite which kind of implies that like 
like this is going to be the sale that goes on during this event as opposed to last year uh, which would be x v i i i because that's how roman numerals work these didn't have the diamond so i don't know man it's got me a little bit spooked but either way they do look kind of cool though um they're not overly fancy but in classic style they do have like the numbers actually this one is probably the least uh i think that they should probably take this one back and bake it a little bit you'll see real quick uh that the other ones actually end up looking a lot better than this but um yeah also they fixed the thing where the multiple the bug that i we reported last time or the other time did something happen did i all right So this is closer to what it should look like, right? You can see the uh, XIXIX pattern on it. It matches the cloth, right? Is my computer freaking out right now? So weird. Hold on. just in case. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks all right. Yeah, it does kind of look like a Kador skin. It's pretty shiny. I don't know. I just like, look, I'll be honest with you. Capsule Day skins are fine, but I'm not sure if I could recommend anybody paying for them. 07. Yeah, that's not just you. That's my computer like going, ah, for some reason. Now that looks pretty good. Partially because it's like Kaldari blue anyways. That's true. They could always put in the other ones like this is just the premium ones and they haven't put in the standard ones yet i mean it is a while off that's that's a fair point yeah because these are all pretty high tier stuff i mean battle cruisers and above It's just, it's weird, because, like, I get the, like, it works as a, as a holiday, or, like, like, if it's given to you for free or whatever, then it makes sense to me, because it's, like, the, the branding of the d date and all that stuff, but, like, I don't know, man. I, I very rarely use these kinds of skins on things, so maybe I'm not the one. Uh, well, I mean, this is kind of cool. Again, it looks good for Kaldari, but, uh, you know, in a world in which this skin exists, like, okay, sure. Yeah, it's possible. It's very probable that these come uh, with a pa with packs, for sure. Uh, well, the next little bit's focus is going to be the Kaldari. The Kaldari have a lot of focus on them right now. Mostly because of G to 4-4. Four four. <laughs> Which, we have something to talk about. Holy snap. Either way, it's an it's an alright skin. It's pretty cool. 
I wouldn't go out of my way to get one. But I do I mean the pattern looks good. Well, I mean, hold up. No, no, no. Let me be clear. The, I did not say that from a from a player perspective. I said that that uh, that was a statement from a lore perspective. Just to be 100% clear. Which fine. We'll just jump into that. We'll jump into that. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, on top of the new stuff that seems to be being put in for uh, the the harvest or the hunt rather, uh, which uh, we can talk more about some of the other stuff later, I do want to talk about these new items. Um, yeah, I just realized. Hold on, actually, let me. <sighs> Fooey, I'm going to be all out of order, but let me see something real quick. Because they they added some more text today, too. Oh, hold on. No, I got rid of my... For some reason, closing my tabs for one thing closed all my tabs, period. Including the ones I wanted to keep. All right. So on top of the items changed, there has been, or added, there's been a several key uh, text changes. For example, this one is, is the Garistus infiltrators have escaped with classified Kaldari state research data using thousands of stolen capsules launched from the Jita 44 station. Colorful, mysterious capsules can be found all across New Eden. Warping between celestial objects, such as planets, moons, asteroid belts, suns, and stargates. The capsules can be found using the directional scanner or using combat scanner probes. Destroying these mysterious capsules will provide you with an acceleration gate keys that are required to reach the final room of the event data and combat sites. Keep an eye out for the elusive mysterious golden capsules, which contain extra loot, including valuable st stolen research data and exclusive event trinkets. Hunt data relay, relay hacking sites can be probed down all over New Eden, and data analyzer modules will allow you to collect their loot. Gris's hunt outpost combat sites will appear in the anomaly scanner and allow entry for T1 faction and T2 faction and destroyers. T, T2 frigates and destroyers. Special hunt master versions of both combat and hacking sites can be found exclusively within Kaldari Losec space and in the Venal Nolsec region. These hunt master sites are are more difficult and even and more lucrative than the standard event sites. Good hunting. So that pretty much, I mean, like, yeah, that's the description of the hunt. So, but the gold capsules thing is kind of interesting, right? Um, and I think that the item that we're going to see is uh, related to the stuff that we're the descriptions that we're going to be reading. Um, I think there was there anything else. Oh uh, yeah, all of the the word industrial, as in like industrial ships, as in the ships that care haul, haul things. Industrials are now being renamed haulers. Neat. Um. There's the pit. There was something about Mordu. Hold on. Oh, never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's part of it. Let's get to the uh, descriptions I've been looking for. Whoa. Is that why my, we, we had some lag or whatever earlier? I, th I thought I saw ships warping around. That's pretty funny. 
Well, all right. So there are these new holo storage items. Actually, hold on. Yeah, there's the holo storage, but there's this classified Caldari databank and Garissus Infiltrator Clone Corpse. So this used to be the DED agent, but the DED agent has been redone as the corpse of an apparent Garissus agent recovered from the debris of a capsule intercepted and destroyed while trying to escape from Caldari State Forces. The hijacked capsule appears to have been rigged to burn out every implant in the pilot's clone, going beyond even the damage a standard transneural echo scan would do to the occupant's gel brain. Even so, expert forensics investigators may be able to make something out of this scorched and frozen hunk of synthetic flesh and disrupted nanotechnology. And this one says, heavily encrypted and partially fried by some kind of security failsafe installed in the standard firmware, this databank is clearly the pro property of Caldari Navy. If the dire warnings of imprisonment and asset seizure issuing from the flickering holer interface is any indication. The device was recovered from the debris of a capsule apparently hijacked by a Garissus agent. And even considering the layers of encryption and massive data corruption, there's no doubt that the Caldari Navy would like this item returned to them and will compensate anyone for doing so. Of course, many empires and independent quasi-state actors have the, this kind of expertise would be required to make anything of this burnt of an encrypted holo storage device. Perhaps somebody else might be interested in offering a finder's fee for the item. So these two items are clearly uh, the the things being added in order to you know give a little bit more like turn-ins. What's interesting about this is that uh, these the golden capsule makes it so that there's a reward as part of this that doesn't require the actual running of the site, right? Like you you could actually just find a golden capsule and have it be worth something because it drops this stuff uh, and you can turn them in. All right. So let's get on to the data, data banks. I find these very interesting and we're going to have to walk through them one at a time. So each of these messages, now they've got given us lore, lore items with, with uh, stuff with like different messages many, many times before. This one seems to give us a lot more information than your average one. So, or at least it confirms a lot of things or hints at certain things pretty strongly. So the first one. Uh... Side note, picked up some more chatter on ancillary projects other than Firebird. The general idea seems to be setting up more, even more decentralized design groups. State got fat and slow in the de last decade, but seems that they're finally getting their heads out of their arses. This guy Soraki is no fool. We do well to keep a close eye. So, Soraki... Let me verify this real quick. Um, yeah, that's Akimaka Soraki, the current uh, chairman of the uh, CEP. The the basically he's the de facto administrative head of the Caldari Union or Caldari, yeah, Caldari State. Note uh, note two says, uh, entry to previous drop. Anyway, I also heard from the peacock. He wants to meet again. That's the second time this week. I don't mind that he, cha uh, that he changes up the routine. It's good opsec, but most of the time he just wants to bloody well gossip about side stuff. Mind you, this is dirt on that sorrow guy, Ovig Dursk. Oh, boy. Everybody would love some dirt on Ovig Dursk, right? That's fun. So it's worth noting that Peacock and Firebird are both terms that I don't think anyone's actually heard before. Um, the Garissas have a lot of codename people. I haven't been able to find any of my searches. I asked the uh, RP community. Uh, obviously, it's been a very short period of time, so somebody might actually know. But uh, as far as I'm aware, neither Peacock nor Firebird are agents that we were aware of up until now. 
Heard from one of the cell members based in the Amar Trade Registry offices. Passed on some information about Edencom spending priorities during the invasion he dug up while sifting some secure archives. Crazy, those Amar. They document everything. Three times over. And then another agency does it all over again. I mean, the information doesn't really surprise me. We always knew that Edencom was an Amar plot. Oh, snap! Oh, shit! Ah, uh, these are the things that they've hinted at before. And and we, I mean, like, technically we could argue that this is like, uh, this is like Garistus propaganda. And if you p read the world news a lot, there's been a, a bunch about the Garistus exposing different Kaldari corruption and, you know, all sorts of stuff now. But they also could be totally, like, shitting it up, right? Like, who the hell knows if the Garistus uh, uh, are, are being legit here? But this is like internal messaging. So uh, recoverable and easily, uh, relatively easily decrypted data. Maybe they intended on getting us this? I don't know, man. Here's number four. Uh, made a new contact with the Serpentis subcontractor operating in 4-4 undercover, uh, undercross sector 97. I hate going down there. It's worse than the docks district. Worse even than the engineering subcore uh, residences. It's pretty much a sump for everything filthy and completely messed up in this damn station. Had to wear a pseudo face and combat rig, of course. Serp guy was packing a bloody nanowire pistol. Don't really blame him. So, uh, not... This isn't as revelatory, but, the, like, it might be worth looking up this Undercross Sector 97. Uh, because there is some, like, the Jita Chronicle, um... But yeah, Serpentis subcontractor in Jita. Uh, round, I'm, ass I'm assuming. Round another monitoring routine installed in the block subnet. Found. Found another monitoring routine installed in the block subnet. Sniffer and heuristics engines almost ignored it. Pretty sophisticated camo for re general residents block monitoring or for general residents block monitoring but could be that they don't want to piss off all of the brass and tech heads living in this dump don't think that indicates a problem with this with cell opsec standard calnav par paranoia i think the navy factions are still tearing at one another after the invasion uh blocks subnet i i assume that this is like a location Like, it sounds like it's a housing district. But I don't know if this is, like, the, the SEC site that they hacked. I'm not sure. SERP contact ca came through with something interesting. But it's got nothing to do with Firebird. Seems Upwell and PKN might be playing a double game behind the scenes when it comes to the Intaki. Hard to believe that old man Mordu would put up with something like that. But word is he's got new obsessions these days. I believe anything of the for, uh, of the forest faction and upwells. So, I believe anything of the forest faction and upwells so distributed and murky. Any number of the players could end up to could be up to something. Could be useful info down the line. So this is interesting because like we've known that upwell and PKN are both kind of snaky, specifically PKN, but even upwell. Um, you know, has had some doubt cast at them. Um, the forest faction is PKN. Um, what it has to do with the Intaki. So there's been a lot going on with the Intaki and uh, Intaki Prime and or Intaki 5 and the Intaki system. There's been negotiations and there seems to have been a, like a peace agreement, like an, uh, uh, um, a tr uh, an arrangement create made by the Galente and the Caldari recently to try to provide independent security to Intaki uh, related to Mordu. But this, so this, this str uh, string or this, uh, this message really implies some uh, potentially relevant stuff. Uh, PKN is the forest action. So it's a uh, lie, die, 
NOH and uh, sous vide, I think. I can't remember. It's three of the mega corporations. It's the people who made Hypernet and uh, remade Jita. That's that's why I was saying Jita 4.4 is, is important right now. Because uh, PKN, like, that's where they got a lot of their money. And one of the things that the Gristus, I think it was, exposed was the fact that uh, they actually embezzled a whole bunch of money out of, like, the Navy and stuff like that in order to give more money to the construction of Jita 4.4 and such, which means, like, you know, their pockets. Um, and that this is one of the reasons why the invasion was so nasty to the, uh, the Kaldari. Seems the monitoring routine wasn't CalNav after all. Sparks uh, took a look at the data I'd sniffed off the thing, and she reckons it's Archive K. That's all we need. Maybe the Artaurus raid riled them up. Maybe they've got their hooks into Soraki already. Hell, maybe Soraki's their man. We need to be... careful? Cautious? I don't know. Um... Ataris, I believe I looked it up. Ataris is a system. Yeah, in Lone Trek. Boo. Where's the map? Uh... So it's right here. Which seems kind of out of the... There's Pykura. It's kind of near the Citadel. Either way. Eight. The peacock told me he'd requested another operation against uh, the Arturus. I think it's a mistake. I told him as much, but he laughed it off. I think he was drunk or high, actually, but you never know with him. I don't like that uh, that a merc like him is running this op, but Rabbit made him the contact back to the nest. Sparks told me he pulled off a job against the feds that the Black Eagles don't even know happened. Hard to believe. So, hold on. Sparks is a different person. Uh, Sparks took a look at the data I'd sniffed. Uh, where is Sparks first mentioned? Is that the first time he's mentioned? Yeah, I guess so. So Sparks is the person that helped him process the data. Could have sworn he was said before that. So Sparks is the data guy. Peacock is a mercenary that has been hired or that, that is working with them. And that Rabbit has made uh, the connect back to the nest. The nest? I wonder if, so like the nest could be like, sort of suggests Serpentis. Hard to say. Let's keep going. Thank you for joining us down the rabbit hole of Jeep Online. Uh, I afterwards met, or afterwards, I don't know, something afterwards met the peacock at the usual place. I don't know why he insisted on using that bar. He'll get us all caught sooner or later. I passed on the latest news on Firebird. As usual, he tried to get some data out of me there and then. Does he think I carry it around on me? I don't know what uh, I don't know what the rabbit sees in him, but I'm saddled with the guy as a handler. I'll just keep making a record of these security lapses so I don't. Okay, so Firebird 
picked up some more chatter on ancillary projects other than so this guy whoever is the writer of this is assigned to be monitoring this guy named firebird or this thing called firebird but has picked up information about something else he takes it he gets his new contact with a Serpentis subcontractor. Uh, who's who's kind of crazy. Uh, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so... The Serpentis contact. He wants to meet again the second time this week. Uh, I wonder if so. I wonder if Peacock is the Serpentis contact. Yeah, I think that Peacock is the Serpentis subcontractor because subcontractor means that he's hired by them. He's another person. It's part of the arrangement, right? So I don't think he's a subcontractor for Jita. He's a subcontractor for the Garistus. That's the language that he's using, right? So, uh, so Rabbit, the head of the Garistus, has assigned this guy to go get information about Firebird. but ends up getting information about this other project. He makes a contact with, with Peacock. Peacock claims to have information on Sorrow or on Ovidursk. Uh, wait, hold on. Gosh darn it, hold on. Let me close this again. And do this in order. One. So, yeah. That's true. We're good so far. Oh, hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Nope. Peacock is not the Serpentis subcontractor. Because this message is first. Peacock gets messaged. Entry to previous drop. So I'm assuming that this is so J44001, J44002, uh, EHCN. Well, I don't know. So this is an update to the previous one. He's heard from Peacock. So that's not established here. He wants to meet again the second time this week. Uh, mostly wants to gossip about side stuff. Dirt on sorrow. Got it. Then in three, in three gets information about Edencom. Heard from one of the cell members based on the Amar tra trade references. Uh, and then he makes it. Then he makes a new contact with the Serpentis subcontractor operating in four four Undercroft ninety seven. Okay, then uh, he finds another monitoring routine installed in the block subnet. Sniffer and heuristics. Um, oh, yeah, so Sniffer. This is Sniffer. Sniffer and heuristics uh, engine almost ignored it. Oh, no, no, no. That's, sorry. We want um, somebody else. Hold on. What was the guy's name? Shit. There's so much. Uh, Serpentis contract uh, contact came through with something interesting, but it's nothing to do with Firebird. He has information about Upwell and PKN and what it has to do with the Intaki and Mortis Legion. Blah, blah, blah. Good. So the monitoring routine wasn't Calnev after all. So that's from uh, 
this one. So five, he says standard Calnev paranoia. And then here in seven, he says, nope, it wasn't that. And then Sparks, hold on one second. Um, uh, so, Spar so Sparks is the guy. Seems the monitoring routine wasn't Calnar after all. Takes it to this guy named Sparks. Took the data after I'd sniffed off the thing. She reckons, so Sparks a girl. It's Archive K. That's all we need. Um... Maybe the Octorus raid riled them up. Maybe they've, they've got their hooks into Soraki already. Maybe Soraki's their man. I mean, obviously, if this guy is... he's Yeah, this guy works for the Gristas, so he's not talking about the Gristas. He's talking about either Serpentis or... I don't know, somebody else. We'll see. And then the Peacock told me he requested another operation against the Atoros. At, whatever. I think it's a mistake... Uh, Sparks told me he pulled off a job against the feds that the Black Eagles didn't even know happened. Hard to believe. Th that's, I don't, I don't, not hard for me to believe. There's been a lot of weird stuff happening recently. Afterwards, met the Peacock in the usual place. I don't know why he insists on using that bar. Somehow I feel like this is the Quaif, like the Jita 4-4 bar. Like the one that we see in, in the, in the Pulse video. Uh, Archive K, I think, is newish. I think that this has to do with the SEC data breaches, but I'm not sure, man. He'll get us all caught sooner or later. I passed on this new. I passed on the latest news on Firebird. So Peacock. Is their point of contact? but not necessarily the Serpentis contact. All right. Time to lose. No time to lose, I guess. Distributing data to all redundancies. Activated contingency omelet. All cell members dispersing until the egg farm is secured. This went to hell sooner than I'd uh, I'd have liked, but we got most of what we wanted. I won't be sorry to get out of these gods and spirits damn uniform at last. Let's hope the rabbit is happy. Okay. Egg hunt, Kaldari Navy, uh, Jita 4-4, entry 10. That, that's probably what that means. Well, he so the problem is is that he he's he makes contact. Uh, I also heard from the peacock. He wants to meet again. So in record two, he's meeting. He wants to meet peacock for the second time, and then in record three or four, he says he made a new contact with a Serpentis subcontractor. So that imp that seems to suggest that the subcontractor in message four is not peacock. All right, hold on. Okay, whatever. There might be some background noises. Who cares? All right, so... Oh, that's all of them. That's all 10. So this is the last point. So there is... Uh, so, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Let's go back to reading what we read about it at the very beginning. Um... Is this it? Whatever. No. Uh, maybe? I don't know. No, there's going to be way too many of those. Shoot. No! Stop! Um, golden. There shouldn't be that many of those.
Yeah, the Garissa's infiltrators have have escaped with classified Kaldari state research data using thousands of stolen capsules large, launched from the Jita 44 station. So it would seem as if the these data logs was basically the operation. They were gaining getting this data um, involving Firebird. And then and then he meets up with Peacock at the bar to talk about Firebird. And shortly thereafter, everything goes wrong. And they have to activate Contingency Omelet, which is when you break all the eggs. So all cell members, all people that are part of this operation, hop in your caps capsules until the egg farm is secure. They got most of what they wanted. That's very interesting. I wonder what... Uh, so... Hmm. That's got, that's got some good questions to it. I wonder if this is going to pay off or uh, if it's just like a fun thing sprinkled in. It's interesting that they implement or implicate Intaki, Mordu, and Serpentis in all of this, too. I feel like that's uh, a big piece of this puzzle. Anywho, um, that is just a little bit of the stuff that looks like, like I said, it looks like they're changing the event a little bit, not enough to uh, to really, like... Obviously, the description of what to do is fundamentally the same, the types of sites and stuff. But it would seem that there's going to be a little bit more going on than just that. Uh, there's the the site in Venal, and it looks like some sort of lore movement. I, I suspect this is, in a way, being used as a precursor to what's happening in at Vegas, or at FanFest. <clears throat> 